For this video, I'm going to be doing the chemical traffic light reaction, which is a nice demonstration of chemical oxidation and reduction. It usually takes place in a sealed container like a plastic bottle, and when it's shaken, it quickly turns red. Then, when it's shaken a bit more, it changes to green. What's cool though is that the reaction isn't done yet, and if it's left to sit undisturbed for a few minutes or so, it reverts back to being red and then to yellow. It can then be shaken again to change the color, and the process can be repeated several times. When I first saw this a few years ago, I honestly thought the color change kind of looked like magic, but as I mentioned before, it's all just based on chemical oxidation and reduction. The ingredients for it were quite simple, and all I needed was glucose, sodium hydroxide drain cleaner, and a water-soluble blue dye called indigo carmine. Both the glucose and the sodium hydroxide were purchased locally, and I made the indigo carmine myself in a previous video. I made it from the water insoluble version of it, that's just called indigo, and if you're interested in seeing how I did it, there's a link in the description. To start things off, I added about 150 ml of distilled water, followed by 3 grams of the glucose. Then to this solution, I added 5 grams of the sodium hydroxide drain cleaner, and I stirred it until it all dissolved. When it was done, I temporarily placed it on the side, and I moved on to making the indigo carmine solution. To do this, I measured out about 100 ml of distilled water, and I added the indigo carmine. However, the amount that's needed is extremely small, some are around 20 mg, and most scales aren't able to go that low. I recently purchased some analytical scales that can do it, but while I was filming this I didn't have access to them, so I just had to eyeball it. Before filming this run, I had already done it many times, so I had a pretty good feel for how much to add. I think it ended up being close to the perfect amount, but even if it wasn't, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. As long as I get close to what it should be, it can always be adjusted later on. For example, if too much were added, it's always possible to dilute it with a bit more water. Or if not enough were added and the colors weren't very strong, it's always possible to add in some more. Anyway, after mixing it for a bit, there was still some undissolved stuff because my indigo carmine wasn't super pure. To get rid of it, I just quickly filtered everything through a coffee filter into another flask. The basic sugar solution was then added to the indigo carmine, and the blue color immediately changed to a green. Then I just let it sit there undisturbed for about 2 minutes, and it eventually transitioned to yellow. And from this point on, it was exactly what I showed in the initial demo. By shaking it a bit, the color quickly turned red, and when I shook it a bit more vigorously, it turned green. Then, over the course of about a minute, it slowly reverted back. So now that you know what the ingredients are and how it's all put together, I'm going to try to explain chemically what's going on. And to do that, I'm just going to go back to the moment before the two solutions were mixed. At this point, the indigo carmine was in its blue form, which dominates when the pH of the solution is less than about 11.4. Distilled water has a neutral pH of around 7, so this was well below the 11.4 threshold. The moment the basic sugar solution was added though, the pH was increased. Because the solution was now basic, with a pH above 11.4, a lot of the indigo carmine started to get deprotonated, which caused its structure to change. This new form of it has a yellow color instead, but I'm not exactly sure what its structure is. I imagine it probably looks like this, but I couldn't find a proper resource for it, so this is mostly just speculation on my part. In any case, not all of it got deprotonated, because the bulk of the change happens as a gradient between a pH of about 11.4 and 13. I'm not exactly sure what the pH is of this solution, but it's probably somewhere between 12 and 13. And what this means is that both the yellow and the blue indigo carmine are present, but we don't see them individually, and we see the mixture of their colors, which is green. This, however, is just a small portion of what's going on. On top of being sensitive to pH, indigo carmine is also sensitive to oxidation and reduction. Under normal conditions, the indigo carmine is in its oxidized form because it's always in contact with oxygen in the air. And in this form, as I just talked about, it can either be blue or yellow, depending on the pH. In this solution though, I've mixed in glucose, which is known as a reducing sugar. And in the presence of a strong base like sodium hydroxide, it reacts to form something called a glucoside anion, which wants to donate a pair of electrons. 
These electrons are then picked up by the indigo carmine, which first reduces it to a red form, and then to a yellow one. As far as I know though, the exact mechanism of this process isn't really known, and I don't think the structure of the red intermediate has ever been proven. However, based on a couple sources that I've found, it does seem like this is probably what it looks like. One other thing that I wasn't able to find out was whether or not the yellow basic form of the indigo carmine was getting reduced as well. Every explanation that I saw was just for the regular blue form of it, and nothing ever mentioned the yellow one. I think there is a chance that it might just be a spectator in this reaction, and the color change is all because of the blue one. So, for example, as the blue one turned red, the color changed from a mix of blue and yellow to a mix of red and yellow. Then, when it was fully reduced, it was a mix of yellow and yellow, which of course just blended together. If this were true, then adding more base would shift more of it to the yellow form, and it would ruin the color change. So to test this out, I used a huge excess of the base, and it did end up ruining it. This result definitely supports my theory, but I think there needs to be a bit more work done to conclusively say anything. Anyway, now to change it back, all I had to do was shake it, which at first might seem kind of magical. However, it's not the motion itself that's making the change, and it's a small amount of air that was still in the flask. By mixing things around, some of the oxygen in the air gets dissolved into the solution, and it re-oxidizes the indigo carmine all the way back to its blue form. The reduction reaction by the sugar is still going on though, and it's competing with this oxidation. So the moment that I stop shaking it and introducing more oxygen, the reduction side will win, and it'll push it again towards the reduced yellow form. And once it's fully reduced again, it can be shaken, and the cycle can be repeated. I never tried counting it, but I think you can do it at least 4 or 5 times with pretty decent results. So with all that being said, the basic idea behind this process is that it's a battle between oxidation and reduction. On the reduction side, we have the sodium hydroxide and the glucose, which are always trying to give electrons to the indigo carmine. Then on the oxidation side, we have oxygen, which is always trying to take them away. And the final effect that we get from this is an oscillation of the indigo carmine between its fully oxidized form and its fully reduced one. In this case though, it's not a true oscillating reaction because for the oxidation part to work, it requires intervention. The proper ones are able to reset themselves on their own, and there are only a few good examples of them. The most famous ones are probably the Bela usov zabotinsky and the briggs rauscher reaction, and I've covered both of them in previous videos. They're probably some of the most visually interesting reactions that I've ever seen, and I've put the links to them in the description. I originally planned for this to be the end of the project, but I decided to try one last thing. I wanted to see if it were possible to run the reaction with a weaker base like sodium carbonate. This way, the glucose would still have the base that it needed to reduce the indigo carmine, but the pH would be much lower. It would be a lot less than that 11.4 threshold that I mentioned earlier, and it would probably be somewhere around 8 or 9. This would mean that I wouldn't be converting any of the indigo carmine to its basic yellow form, and it would all stay blue. I thought that the colors it made could be interesting, and it was worth trying out. I messed around with it for a couple hours, and this was what I came up with. Into a flask, I added 8 grams of sodium carbonate, followed by 3 grams of glucose. Then, I dissolved all of this in about 150 ml of near boiling water. I let it cool a bit, and then I poured in 100 ml of room temperature water mixed with 15 mg of indigo carmine. After mixing these two solutions together, the final temperature was around 60 C or so. This was important because the sodium carbonate is a much weaker base than the sodium hydroxide, and it doesn't react very quickly with the glucose. So to compensate for this, I needed to heat things up and speed up the reaction, otherwise it would be painfully slow. I've tried doing it a couple times at room temperature, but the reduction portion is just painfully slow, and you can barely tell that anything's happening. In any case, the color change here was quite interesting, and very different than what we saw before. It seemed to go through a much larger range of color, and the color changes also weren't as distinct. It was a much more gradual shift, and I think I actually like this version more than the original one. As usual, a big thanks goes out to all my supporters on Patreon. 
Everyone who supports me can see my videos at least 24 hours before I post them to YouTube. Also, everyone on Patreon can directly message me, and if you support me with $5 or more, you'll get your name at the end like you see here.